Good morning guys, welcome to my channel. So part three in the squishy bag project. So over here I started adventuring into pockets and trimmings and things but I just thought I better stop, catch you guys up and, um, and then we can get into the next stage. Now I have um, attached everything to its backing fabric with some invisible stitch. So my uh, embroidered base, which I really only did a little bit on, I tried to refrain myself, has now had some little invisible stitches added so that this back now is attached to there and I've got my wadding in there, some uh, that canvas and the fabrics. So that can be as thick as you want um, I'm pretty happy with that. It feels nice and sturdy. It's not too flimsy. You could put card in there if you wanted with some glue if you really wanted a firm base, but I think that will be sufficient. Now the little side panels. Now remembering these are for the inside of my bag. I have top stitched them all. Like I said in the previous video, I just did some lines with my... Um, iron out friction pen and that just I didn't have to think then and away I went and it's just given it a nice consistent sort of look this one here well the stripes I ended up doing exactly the same because they're just different color versions of the same pattern so I did the same stitching so really happy with those three this little guy, he feels like wallpaper to me. That's what it sort of reminds me of. I just did some highlight stripes and like I was doing in the last video, I just sort of dropped a few little stitches in between the actual um, flowers. So that one's done. And this guy is the reverse or the opposite, just for something different. You don't have to. I just felt like while I was thinking at the time about the direction I thought I'd do these guys this way and this guy this way and as for getting my lines the first row I just went from a corner across and I thought well that's a good enough angle and then slowly worked my way out with my pen just sort of giving myself some lines this fabric was really hard to draw on so I end up going to my chalk pen um, which I picked up from Spotlight a little while ago and that once you draw it a little white line sort of appears because it's moist when it comes out but it dries and leaves chalk residue behind which is the line and then all you got to do is with a damp cloth the chalk just comes off so really good uh, pen often used in Japanese stitching because their fabrics are often that dark navy blue so they seem to use the chalk pen a lot now let's have a little play with the pockets on the inside i'm going to have pockets both sides i've decided i was inside i was outside now i'm every side just because you know pockets you can never have enough so the first thing i wanted to do was something for my scissors now in my sewing book i have scissors at the back and they are fastened let me just show you by a Oh, what do you call these things? Clips. Um, oh gosh, I've gone blank. Press, press studs, I think they're called. So little one here, little one there on a little strip of fabric with a button securing it. Let me bring that up to the camera. So this is one option and that just goes through, through the handle of the scissors and I find it holds it really well. And I used a little bit of sewing machine tape. I thought that was a, a nice little feature. So I just then press stud it. Whoops. It is fiddly to sew on. But once you get it on, it does hold the scissors from falling out. Uh, and then you need something just to sort of tuck the sharpness of those scissors in behind. So I've got this uh, scrappy heart that I made ages ago and I use that as my little, um, what do you call it? Oh, goodness sakes, pocket. <laughs> so I'm sort of going to do a similar thing. So another option to hold the scissors is a button. So I thought I'll show you the button idea. You need a little shank, not necessarily. I had 
I have done it without a shank, but these particular scissors that I've decided to use for this project, the, it just didn't quite work the shank. It didn't, just didn't close properly. Uh, so I picked a button with a shank. That makes sense. That just gives it that little bit extra height so that I can position the shank around the button. So that's the way I'm going to hold my little scissors on. Now that didn't work. I had a second pair here that I was going to put into the project. Didn't work for these because there's no holes in the center of these scissors. So you would, in this case, look at using this scenario. I just unpress that clips, slide them into the pocket, through there, through there, and snap, snap class, snap. Oh, goodness me. I know when I got these out to stitch in, I have not used them for years. And they were like vintage ones that I acquired from my grandmother's sewing room. So very much still out there, but you may have some vintage ones that you can use. Snap fastener, snap. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> when you don't use something every day, some words just seem to fail me, but I'm sure you guys will tell me in the comments. So, um, all right, so the button's in place. Scissors are secure. They're not going to go anywhere. The only thing I did want to address was this sharp little um, uh, point. So, which brings me to this. Now, one of the lovely ladies at the retreat gave us all a little gift with, and on the little packet was these little individually stitched little pieces. And it's just so sweet. They were all different and, oh, she did a wonderful job. So I decided I would add it to the pocket as a trimming for my scissors. Because I thought this is just going to go into the cupboard and be forever just rolling around in my cupboard. So I thought, no, I'm going to get it out and I'm going to use it. So to protect the back of that stitchery, I decided I would oh, thread this needle first. I decided I would create a pocket that was folded now. What I mean by that, let's just back it up a bit. I cut my piece of calico this big, stitched on the little piece. So now the stitchery is protected and also my stitches are protected. That comes down and now I've got a nice folded top edge at the top of the pocket. And I still get to keep my nice ratty side. So there's a pin. I'm just going to pin that into position <clears throat> and sew around with a whip stitch securing it. So I did along that edge first and now it's time to actually fasten it to the panel so that it doesn't go anywhere. Don't pull it too tight, Corinne. You're going to pucker it all up. And that's as simple as it is. And this step of applying a pocket will apply to any pockets that I do. I will cut the pocket twice the size, um, put a decorative whip stitch across the top of it, and then pin it to the panel that it's going on, and just do some nice rugged looking raggedy whip stitch. Now, if you what is going on? Why? Oh, I've gone through one of those. Oh, this is just a just turning into a hot mess. Okay, now we got it. Let's get the scissors out of my way because that's like trying to operate around a very sharp implement. Let's get this needle threaded again. I decided to use six strands of cotton. I could have broken it down to make a finer stitch, but I want a real chunky, chunky, um, chunky look to my work. Because this, this running stitch that I've done everywhere is 
quite large and bulky, so we're doing a childlike stitch, if that explains it. If you want to be really precise, you can. Depends, you might want to put a, a blanket stitch down there, a fly stitch, some lazy daisy stitches. Oh, go your hardest. So I'm just going to stitch that pocket on. And like I said, this will be the principle that I will apply to all of the pockets. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that and I will stitch on. I'll do a little bit more. <clears throat> We've got time. I don't know, I feel racy today that I'm got so much to get through in this video that I'm not going to do it in an hour but I think we'll be fine I can stop and start because I plan to stitch the entire lining sides together and also stitch them to the the base so there's a fair bit of work to do but I think we'll be fine like I said, I can pause the video, go and make myself a coffee, sit down, stitch a stitch, and then come back, and then we move to the next process. I'm really looking forward to the next few videos because we get to start creating some panels and having a bit of a play. This is sort of getting your base done. I'll put a couple more pockets probably inside, but I won't go too crazy because I sort of want to scatter them around. I'll probably do a pencil pen pocket. Um, probably, I'm sort of, in my mind, I'm thinking... The things that you pick up and use regularly when stitching, I want them on the exterior of the bag. Because I noticed when I was at the retreat recently, I took, the only thing I took with me was this. And I felt like I was going in there of a morning and grabbing out my needle. But then I sort of felt like there was other little things that I was out and about that could have been in a pocket, like my tape measure, <clears throat> my pen, but I was constantly going in and out of this. And even my, my needle, whenever I'd hop up to go for morning tea or hop up and go chitter-chatting around the table, my needle would go into this and this became my pin cushion. So I'm even considering making somehow a pin cushion that would be on the side of the bag. Because that was something I was like, oh gee, I didn't have this mat with me. Maybe that would have given me somewhere to stick my needles safely. So yeah, just sort of thinking through my mind, what are all the things that you do when you're sitting and stitching? What implements do you want close at hand? Maybe technically the scissors should be on the outside of the pocket well they could be but um, I'm gonna put mine inside I think yeah I think I'm happy with them inside but yeah it's look it's up to you you can put your pockets wherever you want to put your pockets you can have a pocket on every panel you could have only a couple pockets it's um I might well, I'll keep going the next little thing that you can see here I want to make is something for a tape measure. So I think I've worked out how I'm going to construct this tape measure. It just needs to be a strip of fabric with some Velcro dots or a piece of Velcro that you cut to size. I only have Velcro dots 
these guys. So I'm going to just use what I've got. I do have black Velcro that you cut to size, but um, it's black. I don't really want to use the black one. So the pocket attachment process is really simple. Just a case of stitching your pocket on. I like the fact that the fabric's folded over and you get a seam at the top. Now, when Susanna cut all her pockets out, she took advantage of where her pillow slip um, met. And that was a, a raw edge that had been stitched by the manufacturer of the pillow slip. So therefore she had straight away all the pockets she needed that had that turned edge. So that was very clever, very, very clever. So if you've just found my video and you're wondering what the hang I'm talking about, Susanna Vintage Blend Studios has come up with this concept of using a pillow slip that's quilted, you know, the quilted pillow slip that's in most sets, um, and now turning up in a lot of op shops, especially if it's a really fancy one, they're often not used because they're quite unpleasant to put your face on at night. So it always seems to be those pretty pillow slips that are now at the local thrift store. Well, she's cut it up to make this bag and I'm doing a different version without using a sewing machine to construct the bag. Hand stitching or slow stitching it together, which is really fun. Gives you some options, especially if you're away on a holiday and you want to do some crafting and you don't have your sewing machine with you, this would be a good little project that you could take some fabric with you, some threads, and away you go. Come back with a project bag. I'm really looking forward to seeing it finished. My head's just swimming with ideas for the panels on the outside. Very good. Okay, coming up to this, like I'm probably wasting your time by doing this, but ow. That's looking good. Do you think I've got enough thread? If I don't have enough thread, I'm not gonna re-thread and finish it. I'll just leave it and come back to it later. You guys don't need to see but I think I'll make it come on don't you please please be enough isn't it always the way I can hear puppy dogs barking down there one dog in particular I'm starting to think there's something wrong I think I might pause the video, guys. I need to go check my dog. Dogs, I got two. Oh no, it stopped. No, I can still hear it. All right, I'm going to pause the video. And when I come back, we'll tackle the um, tape holder. And I'll finish that knot off and I'll just go check my puppy dogs to see what is going on. All right, guys, back in a moment. Hi, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. Everything's okay. They have a puppy visiting next door and my dog was um, having a chat to pup. So everyone has settled back down. It was like they were having a, a really in-depth conversation, whatever it was about. So all sorted. There we go, and I finished off my little pocket there, knotted it, and the scissors fit nicely, and everything's nice and protected inside, so done. Now, the tape measure holder. So the plan is I've cut a piece of fabric, a big long piece, 
should measure that for you. So half of it is three and a half inches. <clears throat> so seven inches long and about an inch and a quarter wide. It's up to you. You can make it as wide as you like, but you do need seven inches because you fold it in half. Now, if you're on a sewing machine, you would fold right sides together and you could sew right around the perimeter and turn it the right way and then tuck in the end and slip stitch along there and you'd have a perfectly sealed panel of fabric. But because I'm hand sewing, I'm going to whip stitch around the outside to seal it, to give it that style that I'm looking for, this hand sewn childlike construction. Now I've just went to my cupboard and grabbed some scraps that I thought complemented. And I've used this in my Jessie Chorley panel. I'll have to put the name of the fabric in the description below, but I just thought it matched beautifully. And this was the little pile that was sitting in the cupboard. I used it in my down the garden path. I just seem to be drawn to these rich colors, the blue, the raspberry, the red, the, um, the green. So I'll probably work I think they match quite well with this series. I'll probably work some of these scraps into the collaging, but I haven't got that far yet. So I am just now, I just want to trim that. I could look a little neater. I'm just going around the perimeter to seal up my little piece. Then I will use some of the Velcro dots, probably just the one would be enough, to create the closure. You could use, oh my gosh, you could probably even do a button and a buttonhole. You could use some of those snap fasteners. <clears throat> so you've got a few options. You could even just use a ribbon entire bow the trick is to just have something that can be attached to your panel but also wrap around your tape measure so I'm just going to knot that off I need a little bit more thread Maybe to save a little time, I might pause the video again, finish stitching around, and then I might even attach my Velcro dots and then attach it to a panel, but I'll just show you. So let's assume that I've finished stitching. Pick a panel, any panel, maybe one of these stripy ones to see which one it matches. Don't mind it on that. Might pop it on this one. At least it stands out. So what the plan would be is I would stitch it onto the panel and then have this little wrap come around. So I would then put my Velcro dot inside here. One half one side, the other half the other. They have a sticky back on them, but I find that it does eventually give way, so I will put a stitch in it as well. So then, if that's stitched onto there, my tape measure can then be Velcro dotted into position. And that's it. That'll hold my little wrap. Okay, I'll pause the video, finish stitching the perimeter, get the Velcro dots on, stitch it onto the panel, and then we can get onto the actual um, building of the bag. I might do 
one more pocket butt, I think. So I'll have a little look through my fabrics, pick a um, fabric and make a pocket. And it'll be the same principle as this. I'll cut it twice the, the length, fold it in half, whip along that top edge and then stitch it on exactly the same principle. All right, guys, I will be back in a moment. Hi right, guys, I'm back. I didn't get too far. I recalled after finish stitching around the perimeter that I had this tape that looks like sewing tape measure. Um, tape measure tape that looks like tape measure tape. Does that make sense? So I've cut myself off a little piece and I thought I'm going to stitch this on with just some little invisible stitches as a bit of a decorative element to my tape measure holder. Now the other thing I went and did is when I was getting ready to wrap this, I felt like that little tape measure I had, this one, was moving around a little bit too much, like it could fall out. So I ended up going looking for a bigger tape measure and I feel like that's a little bit snugger. So I guess depending on the size of your tape measure, you might need to adjust um, your little strap. So I think mine was seven inches. I probably could have got away with six using this little guy. So just sort of fold it up in your fingers to make sure that your tape measure is nice and snug because the last thing you want is it slipping out constantly. So that'd be my only tip just to double check. This little guy belongs to a set anyway so it's probably good that I leave it where it is. And when I went looking, I found this one that I don't know where I picked it up. I don't even own a sewing machine of that brand. <clears throat> so who knows? It must have been in a pack of something. So it can now have a home in this little caddy. So I just cut it a little bit longer than I needed just to have it wrap over the edge. I thought it might look sweet. Don't know any reason other than just did it. So just a few little stitches to hold that piece. You could put a piece of lace. Why not decorate it up a little? <clears throat> I'm just going to whip down this side and that'll just hold it all. I looked at the time and we've got half an hour, so we've got plenty of time to finish this last little piece. I can show you then the joining of the panels, which I did sort of go through in the first video, but use pins to hold it. But uh, it's really simple. It's probably more simple than using the sewing machine method because you sort of need to stop your side seam or your bottom or any, any seam joining the panels a um, quarter of an inch before you get to the end. And that allows you to come back to the next side and get your needle in there to join the panels. Like it's a little tricky, but it, it's not hard. I find this is really really simple and now I'm going to get my little velcro dots and position those one there it's like I said there is sticky on there oh, goodness me I'm all thumbs And then that will come up and over there. So let's get our tape measure in there. This was wound up in my sewing basket. So I've just, ooh, it's got even threads hanging off the tape measure. Just one of those cheapy ones. It'll be all right. Does it disappear into this? See all the threads coming off. It'll be all right to use in this project and only come out occasionally. It's not my good ones. 
It's just a cheap promotional one that I'd say the sewing machine company put together. But I'm thinking this wider one. So how wide is this one? Oh, just under an inch, two, uh, three quarters of an inch where that other one, he's only little. He's about half an inch. So you would need to, you know, adapt, adapt it to suit. But I'm thinking this will work. But we'll check it before we go and proceed too much further. Yeah, that will work. So there we go. So now I can continue stitching those dots on. Put that over there. I'm just using that bulk clip to start training the tape measure to stay in that position. So where's my thread? I'm up here. I just want to get that stitched a little bit better there and once I get this where I want it I can attach it to my panel now I'm going to change my needle to quite a fine needle because I use these dots when I put all my 52 tags in the big journal to hold them all into position. Oh no, I don't need to. And I found that if my needle was too thick, it really struggled to go through the sticky back these things have. But this one's not too bad. As long as it's nice and sharp and it can penetrate, penetrate the surface of everything it'll work and you do get a little bit of sticky residue on your needles so be prepared to maybe run some fingernail polish remover over your needle it's picking it up from those sticky dots i think you can buy this stuff that doesn't have stickiness on the back but this is what i've got so this is what i'm using it's not worth a trip to spotlight to buy a rectangular one i should remember it and have some on standby because I've only got black. I don't even know what I use that for. I've had it for years. So. Let's go knock this off and hide. Okay. Just get through there and hide my knot it's a bit fiddly you can do it oh it's pushing it through that plastic that's all good done and now the other one is sitting here and it just needs a few stitches it'll just help it all stay together not that you'd be probably pulling this in and out every day anyway so it's just so I'm starting to get residue of glue on that. Goodness me, I just pulled it through completely. I've got too much, too much strength in me today. There we go. That's getting it. Maybe need a couple of stitches. There's quite a bit of tension when you pull Velcro apart, so. The stickiness just doesn't, could put a bit extra glue in behind there, some Fabri-Tac or something that would certainly hold it, but this will also. Okay, that should do it. It's not going to go anywhere. So the next thing is I will attach it, attach it to the actual panel. 
Oh my goodness. Once you get a little bit of that gummy glue in amongst your work, this needle will have to be put aside now to be cleaned. I've had a lot of people ask me for a tutorial on my sewing book, this one here. So I'm going to do that uh, next because I do want to make a couple extra for some gifts. So I thought, well, I'll film it and um, you can see how I piece that one together. I have done them in the past, but a lot smaller. So that's going to go like that. All right. So that's going to go like that and just use my stripes as my guide. Put a pin there. And I'm just going to run a stitch or two to hold it into position. So yeah, I'll... Um, I will endeavour, as soon as this project's finished, I'll do the, just think for a moment, girl, concentrate on what you're doing, because I'm yabbering away. I might just put a marker. I want to make sure this is nice and secure, because there's, you know, a lot of tension on this little holder. Okay, now we can come through, I'll come right over the side of it. I'll do a back stitch so that we've got plenty of stitches holding it. Simple as that. Now I'm sure you could get real tricky and do all sorts of things, so go your hardest if you've got a better idea or something that's more suitable to you you might be using your bag for crocheting purposes so your pockets might be more holding hooks and your little counters and things like that yarn you might have pockets or straps that hold a ball of yarn into it gee that's crooked look at that all right back it up back we come I was heading up a hill there with that stitch. Let's put the pin back in. To hold it. Hmm. I don't know if you recall many, many videos ago, I mentioned that we had had a break in at our house. It was about November last year. Well, I think I gave you an update that one of the lovely gentlemen um, had been caught. Now that was months ago as well, March. So now we're moving on well and truly into the year. Well, we got an email from the detective on the case and apparently... We need to do now a statement. Usually you don't need to if it's just going through court, charges laid and off to the big house, as they say. Well, I don't know what's going on, but his case is now being bumped to the Supreme Court. I did a bit of Googling and I think that means... He's been nabbed for something a lot more serious than breaking into our house. And I know he was part of a lot of houses. So I just don't know what's going on. It's all very, very hush-hush. Of course, they can't tell us too much. So you don't want to jeopardise the case. But it would seem... There's more to the story. So the detective is now whipping around to everyone who was involved in break-ins, you know, the victims of break-ins and getting these statements from us all. So to add to the case. So she is coming over later today to get our signature on our statement. I've been trying to work out how I can 
get some information, but without, you know, probably not needing the information, but I can't help myself. So I'll be asking a few questions to see what, what's going on, what went down. Maybe I don't want to know, you know. <laughs> it might dredge up some feelings from the event. Maybe I don't want to know. Ignorance is bliss, isn't that the saying? All right. I have stitched this little guy in ever so crookedly, but it feels like it would be secure. Done. Just with a little running stitch. Oh, back stitch. Because I wanted to make sure it's nice and secure. And I did two rows because I think that'll give it feels a bit whoopy I could probably even stitch another row but the two rows are in now where's my tape measure drum roll hopefully this works nothing like mastering up a plan of attack there we go perfect the only thing I could have done <laughs> is turn that around the other way I can see so if that was like that it would look visually better so there's a hot tip for you I would spin that around so I will undo that to be honest and it looks like I need a few more stitches in around the top because that's a pressure point when you're pulling so I'm going to do a little bit more stitching on that velcro dot just to make sure it's really secure because you don't want it just you know, falling to bits. Okay, so we've nutted out the tape measure holder. Just needs a little bit more fine tuning, but that's fine. The scissor holder is done. Now I just wanna go through stitching these panels together. So I'm going to do a couple. We've got 15 minutes. So I just wanna show you what I'm going to do. It's really simple. So I have got lots of threads hanging off everything here so they do need a little bit of a, a tidy up before I get too ahead of myself this will take a little while to do so like I said I will get um, get it started get them out of the way maybe which one maybe this one I'm overthinking it stop thinking so I'm going to put some pins in there to hold those together. So right sides together, you know the rule. And then I'm going to overcast stitch right down that side. So it's just, and I'm using sewing machine, sewing machine cotton because I don't really want to make a feature of the stitch. I sort of just want it to blend into the the mushiness of the side and remembering when we do the outer panels it'll be stitched again so if I was to use a thicker cotton it starts to look a little bit messy so by using just a sewing machine cotton and I'm just doing the, a small little probably look you could say quarter of an inch but it's a bit less actually it's just a little overcast stitch it's probably two eighths maybe three oh, it's not quarter of an inch but so that's all I'm doing let me zoom in so you can see the little stitch I'm just whipping down that start whip stitch overcast stitch and that's just going to bring it together keeping my stitch uniformed as in the size now you're going to do this to every panel and join them all together in a circle. Remembering, if you want to put some pockets on, make sure you do all of that first. And I definitely want to put a couple more pockets in there. So this is just to get you guys onto the next stage and to give me some homework. That's it. You probably still could add a pocket if you decide at a later date I want to add a pocket because 
you can still get your hands in there to work on a panel. So it's not, not probably a big thing. So we're whipping down there. There we go. Simple, 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 simple. I might put the scissor panel in next. So I think I'll add a couple pockets to this guy because I want somewhere to pop threads. Or, you know, a little bundle of scrap lace. Pens, like it's up to you. Make sure those sides are together nicely. Mind you, the scrappy bag finish that I'm doing is very forgiving. This could be a project you could give a small person to do that's just learning sewing. And they just work them through the different steps, a bit of hand sewing, and they could easily make a bag. I don't think it's too hard, especially if you pre-cut the panels and they've just got to whip stitch things together. Be a lovely project. Okay, pins out. Keep them there because there is our panel together stitched in. Okay, so once again, right sides together. Same thing. We're going to whip stitch down that side. Oh, we're going to go so over time. I can see it. <laughs> So let's assume we have stitched down there and we've done it again and again and it's now all connected. So then you've got a circular piece. So I'm going to stitch down there again. Let me just come up on the camera. Let's assume that's all attached, all of them, and you've now got your circle of your six panels. Then grab your base and right sides together because we want to see the flower you're going to whip stitch that onto there and then you're going to turn it and whip stitch that onto there so you see what we're doing whip stitch that one onto there so what you'll end up having is everything connected and your sides will be around the perimeter of the little bag but remember do it before uh, do it after you've finished all your pockets, okay? You, but, you know, at the end of the day, you'd still get your hand in there. If you decide to stitch another pocket, you'd be able to get in there. So don't panic if you go, oh, I've forgotten a pocket, because I think you'd still be fine. All right, guys, that's it for me. Um, yep, that's it for me. Enjoy your day, and I will see you in the next video. I'm going to work a little bit more on that because I think I need to turn it and just reinforce it a little bit more. Can't hurt. I might as well do it now while I can access it easily. Otherwise, it'll be one of those things that'll be forever bugging me. So I'm going to just do a little bit more work on that. All right, guys, look after yourselves and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Hi, guys, I'm back. I've gone pocket crazy. So I'm back to show you what I've been doing I went away and started stitching all my panels together and started thinking more about pockets and what I'd do and just started playing with pockets. So I'm back to show you. I have fixed that so it's now the right way around and nice and secure, ready to go. I then put a piece of the tape through here like a belly band and I've just stitched it in the center with a couple stitches I felt like it was a little bit um, sort of wobbly so um, a piece of um, cardboard with, where are they? 
a little card that has some threads on it could go in those. Um, the other thing I thought of is you may be wanting to take some little scraps of fabric to a retreat. So I thought, well, maybe some little fabric morsels could go in there and some little um, uh, lace morsels. So it's up to you if you did decide to do a belly band. Have a think about what goes in there. You may decide not to put that little stitch in the middle. I've made two little tucks. I'm yet to stitch this panel together. It's sort of the last one in the sequence. And then that will come together to make our, our circle. Now pockets, this little guy here is the same principle as that one there. I just cut a piece of fabric, folded it in half, so I had that nice fold at the top. This little fellow is a double pocket, so um, three and a half inches. So bring that out to seven, fold it in half, and that's the calico. And then I went to put a little patch on the front and I'm like, oh, I could make that a pocket as well. So same principle, just with a little folded edge there. The fabric doesn't go all the way through because I had cut a little rectangle. I just turned over the top edge to get me that nice little edge and then did the little decorative stitch across the top or whip stitch. And then as soon as I got to the side, anchored it to the piece and then carried on going through all layers of this pocket, folded it over so that was all hidden and then did the process of stitching on the um, uh, pocket to the back. I hope that all makes sense. I do have this pinned with the pins a fair way into the panel so it's making that pocket look a little odd. So let me just move those pan pins back so it gives you more of an indi a true indication of its placement so that should be fine um now the pens remember we were talking about a pen pocket well i've decided to put one on the inside i don't know where i'm going with this project i'm sort of doing whatever whenever pockets inside pockets outside i don't know what i'm doing so what i've done with this is i have created the piece of calico like before, a little bit bigger, we'll double the size, folded it in half, and before I did too much, I just popped on a little patch, a little decorative piece of fabric. So my next stage, and this is where I thought, oh, I should turn the camera on and show you guys what I'm doing, is I'm going to attach it now to the panel, and at the same time, I'm going to create the channels I use my ruler for my two pens to go into. Okay, so what I'm thinking is I'm going to stitch in the center first, coming up here. Is that the center? Do we need a ruler to check that? It's pretty close. I just move it over a fraction. I've been fiddling around with this for ages this morning and I can hear emails dropping in. I'm going to put a double stitch there. I just want to know that any pressure I apply by shoving, oh, come on, thread, you are not serious. One of the, the drawbacks of using stranded cotton is if anyone, any of them decide to muck around, you'll end up with a little twisted mess. I'm going to attempt to try and salvage this. Otherwise, it will be a snip. Let's get him in with his mates. Can we do it? No. No. Let's try that again. Let's get this knot and snipped, release the mess. What's going on here? Must be one of these threads, yeah, has scooted down. Well, you're misbehaving, you're out of here. So I'm using five strands. Okay, we're not gonna put up with that behavior, I tell ya. So, 
let's start that again. Let's get that anchor stitch down. So the theory is I'm going to stitch straight down there. I'm going to head around the side, could go either way. Head around the side, then anchor it on that edge, then scoot along the folded edge so that it keeps our pocket open. Anchor it again and then straight down to finish at the center. So I sort of was thinking about the best way to do a lap around logically. Does that make sense? So now I'm just going to do a little running stitch all the way down and just to make it a bit easier I'm going to stack my needles so that helps me keep it nice and straight that's you know picking up the fabric rocking it that's better now we're off and racing and I, when I started thinking about how I would get around this pocket in one fluid movement that's when I thought oh I wonder if there's any time left on that video to come and see you again about pockets. So I quickly threw it into my editing program and realized I had 10 minutes. So here I am again. If you're wondering, is this girl ever gonna go? And I've been sitting here literally for an hour or so stitching, thoroughly enjoying myself. And I can hear my phone binging. I can hear emails popping in. I should go and start my day. My husband's already come out, had his breakfast, and he's on on the laptop working. And I should be there too. I should be participating. But I'm not. I'm here stitching with you guys. <laughs> A lot of this stitching I can do of an evening. So now I'm down to the bottom, and I've actually created my little channel for my pens already. Well, the start of it. So the plan is now to just stitch down the perimeter like I did with all the other pockets. Just a little decorative overcast stitch. We're using, you know, a decent thickness of thread here. Well, six strands, five strands, um, crochet cotton. So it's going to be quite strong. But if you were concerned that it wasn't going to be strong at any point through this, you can just go to your sewing machine and, um, you know, run a side seam down on your sewing machine. You could come through here and do a little zigzag stitch, a little sewing machine line. Just keep your um, seam allowance the same. That would be only only thing. If you decide to... Use a full quarter of an inch, go for it. I'm My seam allowance is a little bit smaller because it's going to give me that little bit bigger bag in the end. Look, this thread is mucking around again. Come on, don't be doing that. We'll get it sorted. Some of these threads in my box are really old, like I've had them since I was 15, and others are fairly new. This one is a new one and it just twists and tangles. So I don't think it's an age thing. I think it's maybe an op operator thing, me. <laughs> Come on. Those puppy dogs are still mucking around. They were earlier. They just get so excited when they're chatting to the neighbour. He's just as bad. Luckily, we're on acreage and we're not, not upsetting anyone. They can yap all they like. They seem to, like, chat. And it's like everyone gets so excited. And then by the time I get out there to see what's going on, they're all asleep. The dog next door is asleep. My pair are asleep. That's like... Okay, we've had enough chatting. We're just going to have a nap now. It's really cute. I hope I haven't taken too deep of a thread stitch here and made my pocket too tight. I don't think so. I did test it. Let's 
So how are we going for time? Well, we're pretty much at the hour. I'll just do a couple more stitches so you get the general gist of it. And then I'll leave you alone. And I'm going to leave this alone and pick it up again tonight. I'll go and do some work. the end of my thread I'll have to end it off and start a new one my fabric looks a little crooked too doesn't it on that line I could probably take a little bit off of that okay let's end that off it should be enough for me at least to slide a pen down there very carefully and make sure that I know a pencil would be fine because they're a lot more narrow. Okay, let's just put a pin there and assume that that's stitched and grab my pen. Perfect. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, guys, I will continue stitching stitching that down. That's the last one. I do have a spare space here. Maybe I'll think of something. Maybe I'll just leave it. Who knows? I do like the look of seeing the two florals and not covering them with uh, pockets. So I will carry on and I will see you in the next video when I've sort of got this project moving along a little bit further. All right, guys, look after yourselves and I'll see you later. Bye.